Jeez, it seemed like last week when I did the Snow White review. But it's two months later and we're five movies in. I honestly didn't think I could edit that fast. But let's get back into today's topic. Bambi was released in 1942 and was one of Walt Disney's favorite creations. The movie was based off of the novel by Felix Sultan and would inspire the creation of Kimba the White Lion in the 60s, which would then inspire the creation of The Lion King in the 90s. The movies that were released in theaters after this didn't do so well until Cinderella saved the company's skin. Uh, what I'm meaning is that Bambi was their last success for a while. Anywho, let's grab some snacks, wear out that couch, and let's dive into the story of Bambi. The movie starts off with everybody in the Pride Land celebrating the birth of a prince. The owl is voiced by Will Wright, Thumper is voiced by Tim Davis, and the mother of Bambi is voiced by Paula Winslow. With a lot of good mornings, Thumper and Bambi horse around the forest without any parents as Bambi learns to speak, with the help of his voice actor, Hardy Albright. The two then meet the skunk who, uh, really likes being called a flower. I don't mind. Honey! Oh! It then starts raining, and Thumper straight up abandons Bambi, who is obviously new to the world around him. There's also the shot of a family of ducks, which would be copy and pasted in the film The Fox and the Hound. Bambi's mom then takes him to the meadow the next morning, but warns him of how dangerous it is. Then why take him there in the first place? As Bambi starts enjoying his time at Hooters, the meadow gets attacked by hunters and everyone flees. Fortunately, they escape. Time passes and it's now winter. Bambi and his friends go outside to play and that's it. It's cute, I'll admit it. I do this in a toothpaste ad once. Ta -da! But I guess the fun has to end. In Disney's way, that is. That's right, Bambi's mother gets killed 41 minutes into the movie. Isn't television just wonderful? It's now springtime and Bambi's all grown up, with a new voice actor, John Sutherland. Thumper is now voiced by Sam Edwards, while Flower is voiced by Sterling Holloway, who voiced several of Disney's most memorable characters, such as the Cheshire Cat in Alice in Wonderland, Ka from the Jungle Book, and of course, Winnie the Pooh. Something's familiar about this. The owl starts giving the talk to Simba, Timon, and Pumbaa and warns them to be careful. It could happen to you, and you, and you! <gasps> However, the three fail to control themselves as the girls start flirting with them. Like, really flirting. Do the writers need to confess something? But I guess the fun has to end, in Disney's way that is. Hunters arrive in the forest and start killing the animals. Bambi and his girlfriend end up getting separated and his girl gets cornered by a bunch of hunting dogs. Bambi saves his girlfriend, but in turn he gets shot, and Crab casts Fin fire in the forest. Can a guy get a break? However, Bambi escapes the fire and is reunited with his now wife. Months later, they have two fawns, and everyone prays that the mother getting killed won't be a family tradition. The end. So let's talk about the movie. First of all, the plot is pretty thin, and it's mainly Bambi and his friends screwing around in the Hundred Acre Woods. Not that I didn't want to see that. I mean, it was cute. What else can I say? Second is that it's visually pleasant, and you kind of get that immediate feeling when you watch this. It has great shots, great scenes, and a real beauty to it. And third is that this movie is kind of a great eye-opener for hunters and arsonists. It's just a shame that it doesn't work on everybody. The characters are good, and the trio really expresses a believable bond with each other. Though, Thumper should really stop grabbing Bambi's butt. He's done that, like, nine times or something. I like the fight scene between these two stag Patronuses, but it's a little hard to tell who's who in these shots. I like how Legoshi rips off Bambi's foot to break his curse- oh wait, wrong dear. Going through the movie, I would have thought that his mother's death had more importance than what I remembered, but it really didn't. She's never mentioned again, and it doesn't make Bambi stronger or weaker at all. It's as if he was like, oh no, I lost my mother. Oh well. At least in the sequel, he acknowledges the loss of his mother. 64 years later! I wish there was more to talk about this movie other than its pretty backgrounds, its fun child characters, its circle of life feeling, and its songs. Oh yeah, I gotta rate the songs from least favorite to best. There's a surprisingly small amount, but it's fine. They're all pretty. Even this one that plays at the wrong moment. In fourth and last place is the Spring Song. Although it's a charming song, it's anticlimactic. It plays straight after Bambi grieving over his mother. In third place, the intro music. 
It's extremely forgettable, yet kind of pretty sounding. In second place, Little Shower, peaceful and charming at the beginning and kind of a nice and upbeat rhythm towards the end. And in first place, I Bring You a Song. It was pretty beautiful, especially at the end of the movie. It honestly reminded me of the ending songs in Snow White and Alice in Wonderland. Assuming my calculations are correct, I believe a change in decoration is in order. I Bring You a Song wins the House Cup. Wait a minute, wait a minute! I just listened to Someday My Prince Will Come Again. It's better than this one. I'm sorry. Take the banners down. Take your seats and just... Just eat. So, that was my Bambi review. Adorable and a huge step up for Disney. I'm giving the Bambi 1942 movie a 5 out of 10. <sighs> you know, maybe there might never be a song that will be better than Someday My Prince Will Come. Wait, why are the movies coming up? Oh, the next movie is Cinderella, and Alice in Wonderland, and Peter Pan. Okay, maybe I spoke too soon.